What is precisionism? Precisionism, a term coined by American modernist artist Charles Sheeler. 1883 to 1965, is sometimes also called Cubist realism. The movement began in the 1920s and was an early American modernist movement. Characterized by geometric simplification and broad areas of flat, hard-edged color. Precisionist paintings often depict abstract architectural or industrial scenes. The precisionist work of Charles Sheeler, such as Church Street L. 1920, are clearly influenced by the artist's experience as a photographer, and emphasize the man-made world. Other artists associated with precisionism are Charles de Muth, 1883-1935, and Georgia O'Keeffe, 1887-1986. Whose works Radiator Building Night, 1927, and City Night, 1926, are good examples of the style. What is Islamic tile work? Islamic art has a long tradition of decorative tile work, which was used to decorate the walls and other surfaces. Both interior and exterior, of important buildings such as mosques and palaces. The 16th and 17th centuries were considered to be a golden age of Islamic tile work. Tile mosaics in which glass or ceramic are organized into decorative patterns and then plastered. Was one very popular technique. Another was known as dry cord tile work, also known as cure da seca. First popularized in Spain during Umayyad rule. This process relies on large pieces of multicolored tiles. Rather than smaller, individually colored fragments. Buildings such as the Imam Mosque to Isfahan, Iran, are covered in intricately patterned tiles in astonishing geometric and abstract forms. How did Jan van Eyck achieve such incredible detail in his work? The work of Jan van Eyck is known for its incredible detail and realism. Like other artists of Northern Europe, van Eyck used oil paints. Oil paints take a long time to dry allowing artists time to work slowly and blend colors. Northern artists like Van Eyck built up layers of oil paint by applying many thin glazes. Compared to the egg-based tempera paints used in Italy, oil paints can achieve much richer hues. Paint brushes made for painting detail were important some. Brushes were so thin that they were made of a single hair. Jan van Eyck is thought to be one of the first Renaissance artists to extensively use optic technology. Such as convex mirrors and lenses, to help achieve a high level of detail in his work. What is sound art? Also known as audio art, sound art developed in the late 1970s. 
Though artists and musicians had been experimenting with sound and electronic music for decades prior. Sound art, like video art, is a medium rather than a style. And features many different types of sounds from natural to man-made. The Italian artist Luigi Russolo, 1883-1947, wrote a manifesto titled The Art of Noises in 1913. Using new musical instruments as well as music comprised of noise sounds. Also in 1913, Dada artist Marcel Duchamp created the Aratum musical and later. Eve Klein wrote the Monotone Symphony, 1947, which was composed of only one note. There are a number of sound artists, and visual artists who incorporate sound, working today. Including the British artist Brian Eno, 1948, who collaborated with the artist Peter Schmidt. To create an artwork called Oblique Strategies, over 100 Worthwhile Dilemmas, 1975. Oblique Strategies is a set of cards designed to assist in solving difficult dilemmas that arise during life and creative work, such as writing a musical composition. Sound art is still in its infancy. And new audio and digital technology continues to develop and impact the medium. What is the Proto-Renaissance? The Proto-Renaissance, essentially meaning pre-Renaissance is a term art historians use to describe a change in the style of art towards the end of the Gothic period in which art begins to foreshadow the characteristics of the Renaissance in terms of naturalism, realism, and humanism. Different art history books will cite different date ranges for the Proto-Renaissance. But it is generally considered to begin during the end of the 12th century and end during the early 14th century in Italy. Work by artists such as the Lorenzetti brothers, Simone Martini, Duccio, Simabu, and Giotto represent key shifts in style from Gothic to Renaissance. Famous writers and poets of the age include the poet Petrarch, who wrote love sonnets that went on to influence Shakespeare. Another poet, Dante Alighieri, wrote The Divine Comedy, an epic tale of the author's descent into hell. What is Aboriginal art? Aboriginal art is the art of the indigenous people of Australia, whose artistic traditions continue to thrive to this day. Aboriginal art includes rock art, body art, bark paintings, fiber arts, and portable sculptures. Aboriginal people are traditionally nomadic. Aboriginal peoples have lived in Australia for the last 40,000 years and their art is closely connected to their religious beliefs and complex mythology. The Aboriginal spiritual world is called Jakarpa, which is usually translated into English as the dreaming or the dream time, and emphasizes the connection between spiritual powers and place. It is important to note that Aboriginal artists are not creating anything new or original. 
but are reinterpreting designs and artistic elements that have been passed down by spirit ancestors. Many contemporary Aboriginal artists now use acrylic paint to create traditional dot paintings or bark paintings. The work of 20th century Aboriginal artist Clifford Possum Tijapal Jari, 1932-2002 Help bring Aboriginal art to the attention of the international art world and it is now part of major museum and gallery collections around the globe. What is the Church of Tugasu? Built in the late 16th century by Giacomo della Porta. The Church of Il Gasu has what is considered to be the first Baroque facade in architecture. The church was built in Rome for the Order of the Jesuits. Its plan was similar to the traditional cruciform basilica plan, with a long nave and aisles. It was topped with a cupola, a small dome. More shocking at the time was the church's exterior. The fagate is divided into two stories and blends Roman, Greek, and Renaissance architectural motifs such as doubled pilasters, engaged columns, arched pediments, triangular pediments, niches, windows, Corinthian capitals, and large, scrolling volutes. Despite the many disparate elements, the church fagate is not overwhelming or chaotic. Patterns emerge to create a rich, unified space. The ornamental fagate of the church of Il Gisu greatly inspired the elaborate architecture of the Baroque period. What are the main characteristics of Romanesque architecture? Romanesque architecture is notable for its use of round arches, military strength, and exterior architectural sculpture, the latter having fallen out of favor in Europe during earlier centuries. Romanesque buildings rely on thick walls, barrel vaults, and strong piers for structural support, allowing room for relatively small windows. As Europe was a culturally and politically fragmented landscape during the medieval period, Romanesque architectural styles vary greatly depending on the geographic region. For example, at first glance the church of St. Cernan in Toulouse, France might not look much like the Pisa Cathedral in Italy but these 11th century examples are both considered Romanesque due to their use of round arches. Thick walls, cruciform structure and exterior sculptural detail. Are there any good documentaries about art? There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of documentaries about art and artists. One of the best recent documentaries is Simon Shama's Power of Art, 2006, series. Which does an excellent, and very entertaining job of explaining the work of famous artists throughout history from the Renaissance to the 20th century. The PBS series Art, 
21 is unparalleled in its presentation of art in the 21st century. Each episode of Art, 21, which is organized by theme, provides a look into the minds. And usually the studios, of artists working today. For a mix of Western and non-Western art, the series Art Through Time. A global view is also presented thematically, and includes information from art historians from around the world. It is often shown on local PBS stations. Check your local listings. What is a mosque lamp? Mosque lamps are oil lamps, most closely associated with the medieval period. And characterized by a bulbous middle and flared top. Often enameled or made of glass, they are extremely fragile but well cared. For because the light of a mosque lamp was associated with the light of God. Many mosque lamps were commissioned by Mamluk sultans in Egypt during the 13th century and were inscribed with verses from the Quran. What is Fluxus? Fluxus is a difficult to describe, anti art movement, sometimes called Neo Dada. Promoted informally by an international group of artists who were interested in the relationship between art and life. The term Fluxus was invented in 1961 by the Lithuanian American artist George Macy Unas. The word itself comes from Latin and means to flow. Artists associated with Fluxus include, among others, Joseph Buys, 1921-1986, George Brecht, 1926-2008, Nam June Paik, 1932-2006, Yoko Ono, 1933, and Lamont Young, 1935. An experimental composer and performance artist. The artist Dick Higgins, 1938-1998, created a rubber stamp upon which he explained Fluxus as a way of doing things. A tradition, and, a way of life and death, as quoted in Dempsey 229. Fluxus art was inherently collaborative. Artists work together to create pieces by sending art through the mail, for example. Collaborative Fluxus festivals or Flux concerts featured experimental music and other types of short, fast paced performances. Fluxus defies narrow. Description It was intended to 244 be open, simple, and have a sense of humor. Who was Michelangelo? Michelangelo Bonarotti, 1475-1564, was a multi-talented great master of the High Renaissance known for his painting, sculpture, and architecture. He had an incredibly long and successful career, active for nearly 70 years. He was 20 years younger than da Vinci and well respected during his lifetime. Though notorious for being moody and difficult to work with, 
he was one of the first artists in art history to be famous, two biographies were written about him and he was highly sought after by high-status patrons, including Lorenzo de' Medici and the Pope. His most famous works include his painting on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and his awe-inspiring sculptures such as the Pieta, which he made when he was 24 years old, and the David. He also designed the dome on St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, though he died before its construction was completed. Why did the Egyptians build pyramids? A pyramid is an example of monumental funerary architecture with a square base and sloping. Triangular sides These massive, mountain-like buildings are the burial places of Egyptian pharaohs and serve an important religious and political function, to protect the pharaoh's soul or ka, and to aid in the transition of the ka to the afterlife. One of the most famous of all pyramid sites is the Great Pyramids of Giza. The Great Pyramids of Giza, the tallest of which is 450 feet high, were built during the Old Kingdom. C2575 to 2150 BCE, and were intended for the rulers of the Fourth Dynasty, Menkor, Khafra, and Khufu. They were built of granite and limestone and memorialized these rulers as divine beings. Who was Nada? Nada was the common nickname of French photographer Gaspard Félix Ternacon, 1820-1910, who was interested in photography for both its artistic value and its commercial potential. He was particularly enthused by photography's potential for realism. And he wanted to capture accurate details of the city of Paris. He even built a mobile darkroom in the basket of a hot air balloon. And could be seen soaring overhead, capturing aerial views of the city. The French lithographer, Honor Domier published a lithograph. Not our elevating photography to the height of art, 1862, depicting not our working in his balloon. His face pressed up against the lens of a camera while his top hat blows away in the wind. The lithograph emphasizes not our's high hopes for the role of photography in the fine arts. In addition to his photographs of the city, Nadar took many portraits of notable figures in French society, including the poet Charles Baudelaire, the writer Alexandre Dumas, and Sarah Bernhardt, one of the most famous actresses of the day. Who was Gustave Courbet? Unlike Millet, Gustave Courbet, 1819-1877, was open about being inspired by the 1848 revolutions in France. He was known for his socially radical beliefs and his loyalty to his hometown of Ornans. Near the border with Switzerland. He believed that artists could only authentically represent their 
own experiences and rejected traditional academic views on painting. He disliked history painting and believed that art could not be taught. His painting, The Stone Breakers, 1849, predates Millet's depiction of rural poverty. And similarly shows two laborers breaking large stones along the side of a road back breaking work. There are certain romantic elements to the painting, such as the sense of nostalgia for the simplicity of rural life. And like the gleaners, the faces of the workers are hidden. Some critics considered this painting a satire that juxtaposes demanding physical labor with the mechanical processes of the Industrial Revolution. The canvas is quite large for such a subject at nearly 9 feet long and 5 feet high. Even bigger was Courbet's A Burial at Ornans, 1849, which depicted a countryside funeral and is over 21 feet long. It was heavily criticized for depicting something as mundane as a poor man's funeral on such a large scale, but that was exactly Courbet's point. The monumentality of the image brings dignity to the ordinary working class and to the rural countryside. What is the arts and crafts movement? The arts and crafts movement, which lasted from 1860 to 1910, was championed by a loose group of artists. Designers, writers, and architects with both aesthetic and social concerns. It developed first in Britain, and then in the United States. Where it is called the American craftsman style. Inspired by the ideas of art critic John Ruskin. Its supporters believed that industrialization resulted in the diminished quality of decorative objects. And that this was at least partly to blame for social problems of the era. One of the leaders of the arts and crafts movement, William Morris, 1834-1896, also believed that beautiful art should be available to everyone, and that the status of decorative arts should be raised to the status of paintings and sculptures, traditionally considered to be examples of fine art. Other artists associated with the arts and crafts movement include Gustav Stickley, 1858-1942, an American designer and furniture maker known for his geometric simplicity, along with Charles Rennie Mackintosh, 1868-1928, a Scottish designer and architect also associated with Art Nouveau. Arts and crafts architects included Philip Webb, 1831 to 1913, Charles Voicy, 1857-1941, and Frank Lloyd Wright, 1867 to 1959, who is associated with the Prairie School. An American offshoot of the arts and crafts movement based in Chicago. What are the catacombs of Camodilla? These catacombs were used for Christian burials as early as the 4th century. Smaller loculi, or rectangular niches, held between two or three bodies. But larger, 
and more expensive, Cubicula held the sarcophagi of wealthier families. The Cubicula were plastered and painted with Christian imagery. Many of the images found in the catabombs of Commodilla emphasize the Eucharist. The ritual consumption of bread and wine, the bread and body of Christ. Other Popular images include the Good Shepherd and images of Jonah and the whale. In this story, Jonah was thrown overboard while at sea and was consumed by a whale. Three days later, he was cast back out, unharmed. The story reflects themes of the resurrection as well as rebirth and salvation. What is the mask of Agamemnon? The mask of Agamemnon is a gold funerary mask discovered in a Mycenaean citadel by archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann. The mask was meant to lay over the face of a deceased man, and the almond like eyes appear to be closed. While many details of the face are abstracted, such as the curvilinear ears and round chin, some details may be individualized. Schliemann believed the citadel where he was excavating was the home of the legendary Trojan war hero. Agamemnon, and he gave the piece its name. It has been at the center of controversy ever since. With some claiming that Schliemann committed a forgery and hammered some of the gold himself. At the very least, modern scholars no longer believe this piece belonged specifically to Agamemnon. But are still impressed by the power and craftsmanship of the mask. What was the purpose of Stonehenge? Like all other Neolithic art, lack of written records and other archaeological evidence makes it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to know exactly what sites like Stonehenge were used for. The theories about Stonehenge are wide-ranging, and some are more plausible than others. Much has been made of Stonehenge's possible religious significance including the idea that it may have been used for human and animal sacrifices. And though cremated human remains have been found, this suggestion has fallen out of favor. A complete skeleton was unearthed at Stonehenge. It was the body of a man who had been shot through the chest with arrows. While this discovery does indicate violence, it does not necessarily suggest religious sacrifice. Some scholars, particularly a core group of astronomers, believe the purpose of Stonehenge is technological. They think the site served as a Neolithic observatory and was used to track the movements of the sun. An important function in a society reliant upon agriculture to survive. While Stonehenge is aligned to the summer solstice, this theory is also hotly debated. Who was Antoni Gotti? Antoni Gaudi, 1853-1926, was a Spanish architect whose fantastical style reflected the Art Nouveau aesthetic. 
and is most closely associated with a Spanish movement called Modernismo. Gaudi was interested in developing a specifically Catalonian aesthetic within Spanish architecture. And his greatest works were constructed in the Catalonian city of Barcelona. Catalonia is a region in Spain and its people have a distinctive culture and language. Gaudi's buildings are highly decorative, fluid and imaginative often with bright colors, and glittering mosaic elements. For example, his design for Park Güell, 1900-1914, includes a lizard-shaped fountain covered in mosaic tiles. Seemingly lurching along a flight of stairs. Gaudi's masterpiece is the perpetually unfinished Sagrada Familia Cathedral Complex. His first large commission. His unique design was inspired by Moorish architecture and features eight rounded stone spires. Gaudi's highly individual architectural style is considered by some to be a precursor to surrealism and went on to inspire early 20th century expressionist architecture. What is post-painterly abstraction? The term post-painterly abstraction was coined by influential American art critic Clement Greenberg. 1909-1994, to describe abstract art inspired by but separate from American abstract expressionism. His term encapsulated multiple categories 242 of abstraction, including, but not limited to, hard edge painting and stain painting. Hard edge painting, as exemplified by the work of artists Frank Stella, 1936, and Ellsworth Kelly, 1923 is characterized by large geometric areas of color with absolutely no blending. Colors transition abruptly from one to the next, such as in Stella's Grand Cairo. 1962, a painting composed of a colorful series of ever smaller square outlines. The artist Helen Frankenthaler is known for championing the technique of staining the canvas with pure color. Also considered to be a form of post-painterly abstraction. Post-painterly abstraction emphasizes the formal qualities of painting, such as shape and color. Artists experimented with shaped canvas, transforming the painting into an object, or sculpture. Post-painterly abstraction lasted until the 1970s when postmodern artists began to challenge the supremacy of modernist critic Clement Greenberg. Why did Damien Hirst preserve a tiger shark in formaldehyde solution? Damien Hirst's preserved shark piece might not mean much without its title The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living, 1991. Hirst, 1965, garnered early critical success as a member of the Young British Artists and works in a variety of media, making paintings, prints, sculptures, and installations. Hearst's pickled shark, like much of his work, features dead animals and is thematically focused on death and the frailty or fragility of human existence. 
the once fierce and dynamic shark is now frozen. His dangerous teeth preserved in formaldehyde and kept under glass. A living, breathing beast is now as immobile and impersonal as any other example of ready-made pop art. Hearst's preserved shark has been criticized by many as a stunt. And by others who claim Hearst's work shouldn't even be considered art at all. But, Hearst has been very successful overall, both critically and financially. Earning millions of dollars for his pieces, as well as the prestigious British Turner Prize for Art in 1995. Who was Exequias? Greek vases from the classical period feature some of the most impressive paintings in the ancient world. And Exequias is considered to be one of the greatest vase painters of the time. Living in Athens during the 6th century BCE, Exequias painted in what is known as the black figure style, which places black figures on a red background. His work is noted for its grace and sense of order. One of his most famous pieces depicts Achilles and Ajax playing drafts. From c. 530 BCE, the scene takes place during a break in fighting during the Trojan. War when the mythological warriors pause to play a game of ancient checkers. The scene is very symmetrical and the arrangement of figures takes into account the swelling form of the vase itself. Exequias not only painted the vase, but he was also the potter. A signature on the piece reads, Exequias painted me and made me. Who was Georgia O'Keefe? Although Georgia O'Keefe, 1887-1986, is quite popular for her large, highly detailed paintings of flowers, throughout her career she painted a range of subjects from New York City skyscrapers to dessert scenes, cow skulls, and adobe architecture. O'Keefe was a modernist painter whose work was highly distilled and so precise it could border on the abstract. Georgia O'Keefe's first solo show was in 1917 at the 921 Gallery. Run by photographer and collector Alfred Stieglitz, who she later married. After his death in 1946, O'Keefe permanently relocated to New Mexico, where she was interested in the sun's effect on the visual quality of objects and lived an isolated life. Her work oscillates between realism and abstraction and her powerful images have brought her celebrity status as an artist. What is the Curran? Like Christianity and Judaism, Islam is considered a religion of the book because at its heart lies the Quran, Islam's holy text. It contains the revelations of the Prophet Muhammad as received from God through the angel Gabriel in 7th century Saudi Arabia. 
the Quran is made up of 114 chapters, called surahs, and 6,000 ayat, or verses. The holy book explains the five pillars of Islam, which are five duties required by all Muslims, and serve as the foundation of the Islamic faith. Written in Arabic, the Quran could not be translated until recently. And Qur'ans throughout art history are known for their high-quality Arabic calligraphy and mesmerizing visual design. Who was Pablo Picasso? Pablo Picasso, 1881-1973, is perhaps one of the most famous modern artists of all time. Born in Spain, he produced thousands of works of art during his lifetime. And is known for his artistic genius and avant-garde innovations. Picasso was a painter and a sculptor and experimented with collage, mixed media, and sculptural assemblages. He is credited with developing Cubism, along with fellow Cubist and fierce competitor Georges Brock. He helped to popularize non-Western art. And he experimented with symbolism, expressionism, classicism, surrealism, and more. Like many of the great artists described by Giorgio Vasari in The Lives of the Artists. Picasso's talent was discovered at a young age by his father, also an artist. He began formal artistic training. As a young boy and was admitted to the School of Fine Arts in Barcelona at 14 years old. During his studies at the school and others, he copied the work of the great masters. And then later began to socialize with avant-garde circles of artists and thinkers. Picasso's work features a range of styles, media, and forms. And is therefore categorized into periods, including the early Blue Period. During Picasso's Blue Period, he painted The Guitar Player, 1910. A melancholy portrait of a social outcast playing the guitar with long, bony fingers. After the Blue Period was Picasso's so-called Rose Period during which his work became brighter. More delicate, and more varied in color. Work from Picasso's Rose Period includes The Family of Salt and Banks, 1905. A painting that depicts a group of traveling acrobats appearing lost in a desolate landscape. One of Picasso's most important paintings is Guernica, 1937. A monumental work inspired by atrocities committed by Spain's far-right political party, the Phalange, which was responsible for bombing the Basque city of Guernica, killing nearly 2,000 people. The painting's dimensions reach nearly 12 x 25 feet. It is a mass of complex imagery and swooping, disjointed human and animal figures in monochrome. Guernica was exhibited at the Exposition Universelle, World's Fair, in Paris in 1937. And has since become so famous that its political impact has been upstaged by its importance as a visual masterpiece. What is line? Imagine holding an ink pen and pressing the pen against a piece of paper to make a black dot. 
Continue to hold the pen and then slowly drag the pen across the page. The original black point has now been extended horizontally to form a line. Line is one of the core elements of art. Line is used to outline shapes and to create forms. The characteristics of a line convey feeling and emotion. A shaky line is vulnerable while a bold, straight line is powerful. The term linear, is used to describe art that emphasizes line as opposed to light, color, or form. A linear sculpture is one that emphasizes its outline, or exterior contours. What is a triumphal arch? A triumphal arch is a large monumental structure in the shape of a freestanding arched passageway. They were used in ancient Rome to commemorate great military victories. The Arch of Titus, C81 CE, and the Arch of Constantine, 312 to 315 CE, are two of the most famous examples of triumphal arches in Rome. Over 50 feet tall and made of marble and concrete. The Arch of Titus was constructed after Emperor Titus conquered the city of Jerusalem. Relief carvings on the interior of the structure show Roman soldiers proudly carrying home the spoils of war. Including a menorah taken from the Temple of Solomon. Built almost 300 years later, the Arch of Constantine celebrates Emperor Constantine's defeat of Maxentius at the Battle of Mulvan Bridge. The event is important in Christian history as Constantine was said to have had a vision of a cross and heard the words In this sign you shall conquer just before battle. Constantine's mother, Helen, was Christian. And Constantine ended legal persecutions of Christians in Rome in the Edict of Milan. The Arch of Constantine was made of partly recycled material, and incorporated relief decoration. From monuments dedicated to earlier rulers such as Marcus Aurelius, Trajan, and Hadrian. Triumphal arches continue to be used to mark important historic events and can be found in cities such as Paris, New York, and Moscow. Who was Nam June Paik? Nam June Paik, 1932-2006, was a Korean-American artist who worked in many different media. Creating videotapes, paintings, sculptures, robots, laser installations, and writing. He is best known as an innovator in video art. Pake joined Fluxus while studying in Germany and was later inspired by the experimental composer and artist John Cage, who he met and befriended in 1958. Pick used the video as a structural component in his sculptures and installations. For example, he made a cello by stacking television sets and stringing them together with cello strings. He also made a bra out of two television screens in a work titled, TV Bra for Living Sculpture, 1969. Which he designed to be worn by cello player and collaborator, Charlotte Mormon, while she performed. 
Opaque's Video Flag X, 1985, is another example of video used in sculpture a series of television screens are arranged in a grid pattern to display an image of the American flag. Is graffiti considered art? From a postmodern perspective, graffiti is as legitimate a form of visual expression as any form of fine art. Therefore an oil painting is no more valid than graffiti and both are considered art. Graffiti which is often associated with vandalism and the illicit painting or marking of public spaces. Has been part of painting for decades, if not longer. Artists such as Jackson Pollock and Jean Dubuffet, for example, incorporated graffiti-like markings into their work. In 1983, the first exhibition of graffiti art was held at Boymans van Buningen. Museum in Denmark a sign that graffiti was being accepted as a fine art. The artist Jean-Michel Bosquiat, 1960-1988, began his career in the late 1970s as a graffiti artist. Tagging buildings with short, poetic phrases, along with this friend, Al Diaz. The duo signed their work as Samo, same old shit. In the 1980s, Bosquiat developed a neo-expressionist style that incorporated graffiti elements. Explored experimental music, and exhibited his work in galleries in New York City and Los Angeles. Another artist, Keith Herring, 1958 to 1990, also began his career by using chalk and magic markers to draw his dynamic cartoon images in public spaces, such as New York metro stations. Both Bosquiat and Herring have achieved even greater success since their premature deaths. Bosquiat of a heroin overdose and Herring of AIDS. As graffiti art and street art have received increasing mainstream attention. Who was Francisco Goya? Francisco Goya y Luciense, 1746-1828, was a Spanish Romantic painter who lived to see Napoleon. Bonaparte absorbed Spain into his empire, a violent massacre of the people by the new government. The restoration of the Spanish monarchy, and the reinstitution of the Spanish Inquisition. Goya who at one time was the court painter for Spanish King Charles IV. And painted a perhaps too realistic, arguably unflattering portrait of the royal family in 1800. Was inspired by the Enlightenment ideas of the French Revolution and deeply. Disappointed by the failure of those ideas to instill fundamental change in Spain. Charles IV cracked down hard on social change, even banning the entry of books into the country. Goya series of 80 etchings, Los Caprichos, The Caprices, completed between 1796 and 1798. Respond to what Goya perceived of as the folly of the Spanish people at the time. The sleep of reason produces monsters, an aquatint etching from the series. Depicts reason personified as a slouched, sleeping figure. 
while reason is preoccupied by slumber, ominous creatures emerge from the darkness. Including owls, bats, and a cat with wide, glowing eyes. Goya's work suggests the genius of Velázquez, the satire of Hogarth, and the refinement of Reynolds. While illustrating a highly individual and complex imagination steeped in Spanish mysticism and superstition. Other important paintings by Goya include 3rd of May, 1808, 1814 to 1815, which commemorates the massacre of Spanish prisoners by the French. Dark paintings such as Saturn devouring one of his children, 1820 to 1823, and many portraits. Who is Faith Ringgold? Faith Ringgold, 1930, is an African-American artist from Harlem known for her paintings. Story quilts, and soft sculpture. She was inspired by traditions and styles of African art and her work. Explores racial and gender identities as well as civil rights issues. She has been called a fiber artist, but her choice of media is diverse. In 1967 she painted Advent of Black Power, an image from her American People series. Which was featured on a U.S. postage stamp, and later she was a member of the Black Women's Artist Collective, where we at. Ringgold, who was inspired by Tibetan Thankas, began making story quilts in the 1980s. Her best-known story quilt is Tar Beach, 1988, which was also made into a picture book in 1991. Tar Beach visually narrates the story of eight-year-old Cassie Louise Lightfoot, whose father is a union worker. And the way in which her imagination allows her to fly while on her Harlem rooftop. The text of the story, a version of which became the book, is written around the border of the quilt. What is cuneiform? Cuneiform is the first system of written language, invented by the Sumerians around 3100 B.C. It was originally pictographic. This means, for example, that a bull's head, would represent a bull. Over time, cuneiform evolved into a more abstract system of signs consisting of wedge-shaped lines pressed into clay tablets with a pointed tool called a stylus. Cuneiform was used to keep track of business records in cities like Uruk, in modern-day Iraq. Cuneiform tablets have withstood the test of time and offer scholars a wonderful window into the culture of the ancient Near East. Who were, some of, the Abstract Expressionists? Willem de Kooning, 1904-1997 De Kooning was a Dutch immigrant to America. Who greatly inspired the American artists he encountered in New York City. Considered part of the New York School of Abstract Expressionists. His work is characterized by aggressive brush strokes and partial abstraction. 
One of his most famous works is Woman I, 1950-1952, which he repeated a number of times. The painting depicts a large-eyed, aggressive woman with a wide, toothy smile and a wild, abstract form. The energy of de Kooning's work aligned the artist with action painters. And his work made a major impact on 20th century American modernism. Arshil Gorky, 1905-1948 Gorky was an Armenian-American painter whose early Cubist surrealist style influenced the abstract expressionists. His painting Garden in Sochi, C1943 shares similarities with the biomorphic abstraction of Henry Moore. Hans Hoffmann, 1880-1966 born in Germany. Hoffmann was an art teacher who introduced a new American generation to European modernism. His work, as exemplified in The Gate, 1959-1960, is bold and colorful and emphasizes visual structure and color relationships. Franz Klein, 1910-1962 Klein's work was large and he is particularly well known for his white canvases slashed with aggressive, black brush strokes. These works evoke Chinese calligraphy and draw attention to the dynamic power and structural qualities of the brush stroke. Robert Motherwell, 1915-1991 Motherwell was a member of the New York school and was inspired by surrealist automatism and European modernism. He was a writer and a teacher, and had an intellectual approach to abstraction. He painted the series, Elegies to the Spanish Republic, throughout his long career. These works served as philosophical mediations on the nature of loss, death, and visual form. Lee Krasner, 1911-1984 Lee Krasner was an important abstract expressionist painter and the wife of Jackson Pollock. She was highly critical of her own work, even occasionally destroying finished pieces. She produced large, gestural paintings such as The Seasons, 1957. Barnett Newman, 1905-1970 Newman was an important color field painter whose work often features a zip or long. Thin vertical line of color painted against a boldly colored background. Newman's zip has been likened to an obelisk. Newman searched for the sublime through overwhelming fields of pure color. Jackson Pollock, 1912-1956 Pollock is one of the most enduringly popular abstract expressionists. Known for his aggressive painting style and technique of splattering paint directly onto the canvas. He laid his paintings flat on the ground, and walked over them with back bent, applying paint directly. While it seems like his paintings would be chaotic. Their overall effect is often rhythmic and contemplative. Ad Reinhardt 1913 to 1967 Reinhardt was known for making art as art and emphasizing the separation between art and life. He distilled his paintings to a single color and his later paintings are completely black with no trace of a brush stroke. This was done in an attempt to completely separate the work from the act of its creation. Mark Rothko, 1903-1970 Rothko was interested in emotional 
and spiritual communication in his large color field paintings. The monumental canvases of Mark Rothko feature soft edge areas of rich color where different hues never quite touch one another. Creating a tension Rothko linked to tension within human relations. Rothko's paintings are infused with spirituality and psychological ambiguity. Clifford Still, 1904-1980 Still was also a color field painter. Though his works are more aggressive than Rothko's due to jagged areas of color, varied textures, and juxtaposed hues. His massive paintings have been equated with landscapes. Helen Frankenthaler, 1928-2011 Though she used oil and acrylic paint. Frankenthaler's large paintings have the look of watercolor, with stained canvas and large areas of fluid color. Staining produces an almost textureless open space within the canvas that garnered her the support of modernist critic, Clement Greenberg. Why did Louis XIV build the Palace of Versailles? From 1638 to 1715, King Louis XIV the Sun King reigned over France with absolute power. During his rule, France was the most powerful country in Europe. In the 1660s, Louis XIV made a radical decision to renovate Louis XIII's country hunting lodge and transform it into France's new royal palace, Versailles. This change meant that the aristocrats, diplomats, and all servants would leave the Louvre in Paris and move to the relatively isolated country location. Architects Louis L. Eva and Charles L. E. Brun oversaw the redesign of Versailles and the finished building was a massive, nearly city-sized structure with enough space for over 20,000 people, including 14,000 servants. The scale was unprecedented. The Palace of Versailles is an enormous, formidable structure with a severe, classical exterior, manicured gardens, and opulent interiors. Besides any political motivations Louis XIV may have had for relocating the palace, Versailles also served to glorify this powerful king. As the Sun King, Louis XIV emphasized his divine right to rule and his unquestionable power. The king's bedroom was at the center of the palace. He performed elaborate morning and evening rituals that represented the rising and the setting of the sun. The Great Hall of Mirrors, also in the center of the palace, is 240 feet long with 47-foot high ceilings. The hall gets its name from the hundreds of mirrors and glass panels that inundate the room with sunlight. The vaulted ceiling in the Hall of Mirrors, inspired by Karachi's work at the Farnese Palace, were painted by Charles L. E. Brun and feature images of classical gods and the military successes of the king. The gardens surrounding the palace were designed by Louis L. Eva and André L. E. Notre. The gardens are made up of pools, monumental sculpture, and thoughtfully planned paths. The formal gardens at Versailles are carefully manicured. Further emphasizing the wealth and power of the king. How did Korean art change during the Choson period?
The Choson dynasty lasted in Korea from 1392 until 1910, when Japan annexed the country. During this very long period, Korean art was heavily influenced by Chinese art styles and ideas. But a specifically Korean, often secular, style of art slowly developed. For example, the artist, Kim Hongdu, 1745 c. 1814, was known for his lively genre paintings that captured a sense of daily life in 18th and early 19th century Korea. His paintings often depicted people engaging in normal activities such as studying at school or sports activities like wrestling. He is known for a painting called Schoolroom, c. 1814, which shows a young student bursting into tears when he doesn't understand his lesson. The schoolmaster, wearing a rectangular hat and a beard, looks distracted and unsure of how to proceed with the lesson. What is the significance of tattoos for Pacific cultures? Tattooing was, and continues to be, an important part of cultural and religious tradition throughout the Pacific. Especially in Polynesia and New Zealand. The English word for tattoo even comes from the Polynesian word tata. Body art, including clothing and jewelry, as well as tattoos, indicates status. With specific patterns associated with particular ranks within a society. Tattoo designs were usually geometric. The Maori of New Zealand, whose word for tattoo is moko, have separate tattoo styles for men and women. And tattoos of different meanings were placed on different parts of the body. For example, tattoos on the right side of the face represented social status and lineage handed down from the father's side of the family. While tattoos on the left side on the face communicated maternal lineage. Bodies of the most prominent members of society could be completely covered in tattoos. After a period of decline, tattoos are once again being used to communicate status and cultural identity among the Maori of New Zealand. What is a bi disc? Although these circular pendants look like they could be worn as jewelry. They are much too bulky and heavy for such a purpose. Instead, they were likely used in ritual worship of the sky. By, pronounced B, discs were made of nephrite, a greenish stone similar to jade. Some were smooth displaying only traces of the tool marks used to shape them. While others were elaborately decorated. A bi-disc from the Zhou dynasty, 1100-221 BCE, was discovered in a tomb near Luoyang, China, and is intricately carved with dragons. The ancient Chinese regarded dragons as symbols of power who were thought to pass between heaven and earth and to bring rain. It would have taken many hours of difficult work to grind and 
polish the dragons and other abstract designs on the Joe by disc. Who was William Blake? William Blake, 1757 to 1824, was a deeply religious English printmaker, painter, and poet who disliked the formal training of the Royal Academy and spent his career working on highly imaginative projects, including a series of prophetic books modeled after the Bible, which he wrote and illuminated. Blake did not believe in drawing from life, and naturalism was not his goal. He drew on his imagination for visual cues and his works are complex, thematic, and often influenced by the style of medieval manuscripts. He created his own mythology that included characters such as Urizen, a name derived from the phrase, your reason, who embodies rationality. In one of his most enduring images, The Ancient of Days, 1794, which is also often called God creating the universe, Blake blends the styles of Michelangelo with medieval iconography to depict the bearded figure of Urizen reaching down from the clouds. His open hand extending into the form of a compass that glows with yellow light from heaven. While Michelangelo's images of God are graceful and all powerful, Blake conceived of Urizen as a complex negative force, and his The Ancient of Days is bathed in deep red and dark tones. William Blake's art was not particularly well received during his lifetime. But garnered much critical attention about a century after his death. He is no considered one of the most important English artists in history, a significant romantic artist who felt dissatisfied with the promises of the Enlightenment and the values of neoclassicism. Who were the Bellini brothers? Gentile and Giovanni Bellini, members of a highly regarded family of artists, were among the most influential Venetian artists during the Renaissance. Andrea Montaigne, another famous Venetian painter, was their brother-in-law. Gentile Bellini, c. 1430-1507, received many high-status commissions from the city of Venice, including decorative work on the Doge's Palace, though most of his art has been lost. One painting that has survived is his portrait of Sultan Mehmed II, which he painted as a court painter in Constantinople. His work there highlights the ties between the two cities. Giovanni Bellini, c. 1430-1517, is slightly more famous than his brother, and is regarded by some scholars the one of the most important artists of the Venetian Renaissance. He is known for his abilities to manipulate color, space, and form and completed important Christian-themed works on a monumental scale. In 1478 he painted Virgin and Child enthroned with Saints Francis, John the Baptist, Job, Dominic, Sebastian, and Louis of Toulouse for the chapel of the Hospital of San Job. In this work, Giovanni Bellini masterfully creates the illusion of three-dimensional space as the Madonna. 
and child sit enthroned within a vaulted apse decorated with Byzantine inspired paintings and mosaics. Bellini is clearly a master of perspectival techniques, such as foreshortening, and creates a realistic architectural space with rich colors and attention to detail on PAR with Northern European masters. The golds, reds, and blues, along with the ornate decoration and use of light, reflect the aesthetic values of the Venetian Renaissance.